Hello, my name is Howard Lewis Shipp, and I'm going to show you a little bit about what's coming up in Tapestry 5.4. We've been pretty busy at work on this. We've been rewriting the client-side JavaScript very extensively, and we've also been integrating Twitter Bootstrap, which is a great collection of CSS styles and what they call components that integrates really well with Tapestry. So we'll be bundling a version of Bootstrap right inside Tapestry. We can see that in Tapestry's integration test application. This is an internal application inside Tapestry used as part of the integration test suite and we've applied all sorts of bootstrap uh, to it to make it look a little nicer. We have the floating nav bar up top, a lot of typography, this pager. Um, so this is not exactly what your typical Tapestry application would look like but it gives you an idea of the kind of look and feel that we'll get. Now one other area that bootstraps being used inside Tapestry is when there are exceptions. So the exception report page and other components have been rebuilt to use Twitter Bootstrap. It now looks more like this, where we have a, this big alert space at the top. We can then dig down through the nested exceptions, showing the properties of the exceptions, such as this uh, snippet from a invalid Tapestry template and continuing down, down, down to show all the stack frames. We still have the filter frames functionality. The functionality really isn't different from Tapestry 5.3, just the presentation, but it does look quite nice. And so on all the way down. Tapestry is pretty verbose when exceptions occur, at least in development mode. We even get all of this data about uh, JVM system properties. Another nice feature of Tapestry, also we can show here, is that when there is a AJAX update, such as using the zone component, which allows you to change portions of the page dynamically, uh, each of these is an AJAX request, we can have a failure on the server side and we get the same exception report inside a pop-up iframe. So all that same data, the uh, indication of where in the template the problem is, uh, the stack trace, we can choose to filter or unfilter stack frames. So the grayed out ones here represent less interesting stack frames or stuff that's generated in bytecode at runtime. And again, all the details of the request, headers, attributes, anything in the session, and all the JVM system properties. Okay, I hope to do more little screencasts to keep people up to date on what's coming up in Tapestry 5.4.